You know what I like? I like inventions. I mean, think about it. A cell phone. That, that was an invention. It didn't exist 50 years ago. An air conditioner. That was an invention. A light bulb. That was an invention. But you see, all those inventions, the person who created them had that idea in mind. And they were successful. But sometimes, inventions are created accidentally. This experiment actually was an accidental invention. In the 40s, during World War II, America needed rubber. We just really needed a lot of rubber. And people were donating old tires, but it wasn't enough rubber. So what happened was, people were ex, scientists were ex, engineers. And now engineers design stuff. Right? Now they were asked to create a synthetic rubber. So a man went out, created this synthetic rubber, thought it was great, but unfortunately it didn't have the properties that rubber needed to be. Now remember, properties are things that you can describe something about. For instance, its texture, its size, its hardness. Well, he had the synthetic rubber and it just wasn't right. So what he did was, he kind of passed it around and gave it to his friends and brought it to parties and it became known as like this nutty putty and it just caught, caught on fire and people loved it. Now, he then sold it as a children's toy, okay? Maybe it wasn't practical at the time, but the end result was an accident. And here we are, 60, 70 years later, people are still buying silly putty today. Now, the cool part about it is, okay, you do not need to go buy it when we can make it. Now, some of you are gonna say, Carmelo, we don't have these experiments at home. We don't have these materials at home. But the reality is, you have most of the materials at home. And you probably are just gonna have to buy one thing for maybe not even $2. So this experiment is gonna cost you less than it would cost you, okay, to go buy it in a children's store. And you can make tons of it, enough to cover this entire table. Now watch this. All I need is water. Water that I'm gonna just fill up this container with, okay? The material that you probably don't have is this powder. Now you can find this in the laundry section in any grocery supermarket store. It's called Borox powder. It's a laundry booster, okay? Now this is the key ingredient to making Silly Putty. I think we should make something called a saturated solution. Now, you probably don't know what a saturated solution is, right? But let me explain something to you. If you had a cup of water, and you put a teaspoon of sugar in the water and you stir it around, what happens to the sugar? It dissolves. If you put a second teaspoon, it dissolves. 10 teaspoons, it dissolves. By the 20th teaspoon, you see, it's dissolving. It's still in the water, you just can't see it. But ultimately, the water could only hold so much of the sugar. It's not gonna be able to dissolve anymore. By the 21st teaspoon, I'm just making that up. I don't know the actual number. Eventually you'll stir, but the sugar will no longer dissolve and it sinks to the bottom. Now we made a saturated solution. It saturated means the water cannot hold any more of the sugar. Now we're not using sugar, we're gonna make a saturated solution of borax powder. So I'm gonna put a bunch of borax powder in here, okay? The, the saturated the solution, the better your silly putty will be. And I'm gonna stir this around. And you're gonna notice when I stop stirring, there's still gonna be some powder left at the bottom of my, my pitcher. And that's perfect, because that means that the water was no longer able to dissolve any more of the powder. So, 30 seconds later, or 60 seconds later, stop the stirring, all of the borax powder that was not able to dissolve is gonna settle to the bottom, sort of like sand in the ocean, right? Sand doesn't dissolve. Well, now the borax can no longer dissolve because there's too much of it that's already dissolved within the liquid. That's my saturated solution. Now, what's step two? I'm gonna take a cup, I'm gonna take a spoon, and now I'm gonna use regular water, okay? Doesn't matter the temperature, it just matters that it's regular water. Now, you wanna use a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I use one teaspoon of water, and my second ingredient is gonna be glue. So if I make one teaspoon of water, I put one teaspoon of glue. If I wanna make it bigger, I, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's equal amounts, four teaspoons of water equals four teaspoons of glue. So I'm gonna start with my water. I'm gonna, let's count together. That's one teaspoon, that's two, that's three, that's four. I'm gonna put five teaspoons, and that's five. Now I'm gonna start with the glue, okay? Now glue 
is very viscous. It's very thick. So you're gonna have to, it's gonna take some time for you to do this. But you gotta make sure that your measurements are accurate. So it's one tea, one teaspoon. If you want, you can use a stick or another spoon to scrape it off so you're getting the entire teaspoon down. This is gonna be teaspoon number two. Remember in science, measuring is so important. You gotta be accurate. Okay guys, so what I did was I put my five teaspoons of glue and my five teaspoons of water and you're gonna notice all the glue went to the bottom. It's more dense, there's more matter in the glue than there is in water, but that's a whole other lesson. Now what I wanna do is make a mixture. And a mixture is when you mix two or more things together. So I'm gonna take my stick and I'm gonna mix the glue in the water. I'm making a weaker version of glue. It's a diluted glue. Four teaspoons of water or five teaspoons of water and five teaspoons of glue. If you wanted to make it smaller, you can make it one teaspoon of water and one teaspoon of glue. Now, we can make this experiment even more fun. If, if anybody you live with is a cook, chances are in your pantry or somewhere in your house, you have food coloring. How cool would it be if you can make your silly putty any color you want? Maybe you can make it green and look like a giant boogie, okay? Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna make it green. I think three is good. We'll go one, two, three. Now, I'm gonna pick it up, and it's so important to take your time to stir, because as you notice, it's gonna take a few seconds for the food coloring. I like to scrape the sides of the cup, stir it all around, take your time, it's not a race. The slower you go, the better your silly putty will be. Now, if you notice, some of you are gonna say, wait a second, it doesn't look like silly putty. It's just the liquid, because that's all it is right now. Silly putty, has not been created yet. But that's where your borox solution comes in. You see, this is gonna be my main ingredient. When I pour this, I'm just gonna pour it in the cup because I'm gonna need a couple teaspoons of it, right? Now remember, this is a saturated solution. If you notice, the bottom of the container still has a lot of borax powder. That's exactly how I want it. But you see, this is the hard part. I don't know. I just have no clue how much of this is gonna be needed in this to make, my, to make my silly putty work. So what I do is I'm gonna add one teaspoon at a time. I'm gonna add a teaspoon in, and there's gonna be a really cool chemical reaction. Chemical reactions when you mix two chemicals together and something new is made that wasn't there before. And that's what we're about to do. So I'm gonna take a teaspoon, I'm gonna pour it in. I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna stir. And as you start to stir, there's a chemical reaction. And then when you pick up your stick, ooh, Giant boogie. A two. No, well, it's not a boogie, but it's silly putty. But you look, there's still a lot of liquid left. So that means the more borax solution I put into here, the bigger my silly putty will be. And once there isn't any liquid left, you know you need to stop adding your borax solution. So this is teaspoon number two. And you're gonna notice on the stick, your silly putty grew. Now look in the cup. There's still a little more liquid left, so obviously I'm gonna add one more teaspoon. And this is teaspoon number three. Stop, take the stick and stir, and you're gonna notice that it just is, it, oh, okay. I think the silly putty's ready. And you're gonna notice now, it's a huge, wet, giant batch of silly putty. Well now, this is the fun part. I'm gonna pick up the silly putty. I'm gonna grab it off the stick and it just feels gross and disgusting and it's wet. It feels like I just picked my nose again. And I'm gonna take it. Now it's gonna be wet at first. It's gonna be like you're a baker making dough for pizza or for bread. So I'm gonna just press it. Actually, you know what? I have a little, I like to say this, ready? I'm gonna put it in my hand and I'm gonna say press it. Then I'm gonna say roll it. And then I'm gonna knead it. I'm gonna keep doing that process, okay? Press it, roll it, and knead it. Do it again. Press it, roll it, and knead it. Do it again. Say it with me. Press it, roll it, knead it. And then you keep doing it until eventually my silly putty is done. Check this out. It actually bounces. I can roll it into a ball. I can tear it. I can pull it. I can stretch it. Guys, I just made a synthetic rubber, 
okay? A cool chemical reaction, and all I needed was water, glue, and that really cool Borox powder that, again, you can get at any grocery store. I just made silly putty.